Assalamualaikum and salam sejahtera. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to perform the assembly drawing in SOLIDWORKS. So assembly is basically you combine or assemble two or more parts that you have created in part SOLIDWORKS. So before we proceed to assembly, we need to have the 3D part first, okay? So I'm going to create three simple parts and after that, we will assemble them all together. So for the first part, I'm going to create a simple rectangle. So uh, sketch, I'm going to choose this top plane. Okay, just a simple rectangle of a dimension, sorry, dimension 100. Okay, perfect. Okay, now I'm going to extrude this rectangle with the thickness of um, 15 millimeters. Okay, perfect. Right, okay. So once you have done, okay, save the file as part 1. Okay and close it right okay so now let's move to the second part right for the second part i'm going to create um using this uh you know this right plane okay so a rectangle over here with the dimension 100 times 100 right okay perfect um then I'm going to extrude this one of the same thickness, just like the base. Right. And now I'm going to create a hole over here with the diameter of 50. Then we use extrude the cut, make the hole, okay, 15, right? Okay, so now we have something like this. And I'm going to create a chamfer over here. So the chamfer with uh, the direction of um, 30 maybe perfect right. okay now uh, we have done with the second part save the file as part 2 and close it all right okay. now for the last part okay, it will be a cylinder on this right plane okay so uh, a rectangle sorry a circle of a diameter the same as the hole that we created previously okay which is 50 right and I'm going to extrude this one um, with the length of 120 right okay so save the file as part 3 and close it okay. so now we already have three parts ready to assemble okay so let's head to the assembly in solidworks okay so we just click new file and choose this assembly now a dialog will appear on your screen okay so all you have to do is just close it first okay and also the dialog on the left side okay so close it all right so basically uh, this is the user interface the ui for assembly okay it looks the same as the part okay but however okay you will notice instead of features over here now we have assembly Okay, and we have plenty of options for assembly. Okay, so pretty much uh, that's the difference okay, between part and assembly. Now let's begin to assemble the parts. Okay, so first step, we need to insert the part or component. Okay, so all you have to do is just click on this assembly tab. Okay, and choose insert component. Okay, now a dialog will appear. Okay, apparently the one that we closed earlier just now. Okay, so I'm going to choose the base first, okay, which is part one. Okay. So click here and then click OK, click open, right? Okay, now you will have your part on the screen. Okay? So uh, you can move it and place it wherever you want. Okay? So I'm going to click over here. There you go, right? Now let's select the second part. Okay? Uh, we can only start assembly once we have the second part over here. Okay? So just click insert component and select part two. Open. Okay. So, um, okay, let me zoom out first, okay. So, um, you can rotate this part if you wish, okay, by using this rotating function over here, okay. So, for example, in X direction, okay, you will see that the, you know, the shape is rotating. Also, Y, okay, Z. So, I'm going to leave it as the, you know, as the existing ones, okay. So, um, I'm going to place it over here. 
so uh, basically I'm going to assemble this part okay on this base at the left side over here now all you have to do in order to start assembly is click on this mid function over here okay so once you click a mid parameter dialog will appear on this left side okay so here we have the mid selection okay so this is where we are going to select which entities or surface that we are going to make okay and over here we have the you know the different types of mid available okay so we have coincident we have parallel okay? perpendicular uh, tangent concentric log distance and angle okay so uh for perpendicular tangent okay uh we really don't use them frequently in assembly okay so i'm not going to uh, include them in this video okay however you can always try to explore it on your own so a uh, coincident mid okay uh, just like the name sounds okay is a mid between two features or entities that you want to coincide with each other okay so generally we use it to you know for making two planes parallel and coincident okay now in order to assemble this one okay so i'm going to place uh, this part okay on the top of this base okay so basically okay you know that this surface and this surface must be coincide with each other okay so now just now i select the you know the the top surface of this base and i'm going to select this you know the bottom surface of this part too okay right okay so uh you can see that uh, the part two actually moved just now okay so and um, if i view it from the front view okay so you can see that this surface actually coincide with each other okay at the same level and also parallel to each other okay so once you are done okay uh, just click ok and uh, there you go okay right okay so uh that is the first mid that you have done for this part okay so let's see over here okay so if i click on this surface okay i can still move this part two around okay okay you can see that right okay so if i you know from the front view okay okay right okay so uh you can still okay move this part around okay however okay these two surface okay this one and this one okay, will always coincide okay right okay so as you can see from the front view they will always coincide okay i cannot uh you know separate them okay okay right okay because why because you already made that okay so that's why uh we can just uh, you know uh, play around with this uh, direction or this direction only okay right okay so if i view from the left side okay so they will always this this you know this uh this surface over here and this surface okay they will always coincide with each other okay so because because we already use uh, what we call the main okay right now uh next okay i'm going to coincide these two surface okay okay because i'm you know just you know, technically i'm going to assemble this one to the left side okay so this one and this one must be in coincide or parallel to each other okay so all you have to do is just click on this main okay and then choose coincident and click this surface and this surface okay right now click ok right. then you will see okay that this part okay are coincident with each others okay uh, you know you can still move around okay so if i click on this part okay you can still move around okay but you will notice okay now there are only limited to this direction because you already made two surface over here this one and this one and also this one and this one okay so now we are only limited to move this part in this direction okay so let me see from the front view okay so you can see okay i cannot uh you know uh, move this part to the right or to the left okay why because this surface and this one is already coincide with each other okay right so uh the last one to coincide okay is basically this surface and this one okay so all you have to do is just click on main okay, click coincide okay and click this one and this surface right okay so you can just right click or click over here okay to confirm right okay so now you have already assembled the parts okay so if i try to move this shape this part okay it will say that the selected component is fully defined and cannot be moved okay why because you already have three made 
between this part, okay? So, uh, you know, you can always uh, view your map by clicking on this arrow, okay, over here. And you will see what type of maps that you have done, okay? So, if you wish to delete them, okay, you can do so by right-click over here and select delete, okay? So, I'm not going to do that right now, okay? Now, let's continue with the next map, okay? So, in assembly, you can uh, insert the component, the same component, over and over again. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to insert this part one one more time. Okay, just click insert component and select this part two. Right, so over here, okay, there you go. Right, okay, so in assembly, okay, you can rotate uh, the part. Okay, actually, you can rotate the part by choosing this function. Okay, this move component over here, and you will see this, uh, you know, small arrow. Okay, click on this rotate component and actually you can rotate the component okay at whatever position that you wish okay so uh, let's rotate uh, this part okay so that i can show you how to use the parallel make okay so just like that right okay so now i'm going to uh, make sure that this surface over here okay and this one parallel to each other okay so all you have to do is just uh, click on this main and select parallel okay and I'm going to choose this surface and also this one, okay? So you will see that this part, okay, is smooth actually, okay? And now, there are parallel to each other, okay? So that is parallel to me, okay? There are parallel, okay, only, but not coincide, okay? So parallel mate is just a mate uh, we use to make entities parallel to each other. Meanwhile, coincident, uh, when we want to coincide and parallel at the same time, okay? Now for this time, I'm going to put this second part over here, okay, on this space on the right side, okay. So we are going to do the same as the previous one, okay. So all you have to do is just first click coincide, okay, and then make this surface and this surface, right, okay. And you can just right click, okay, to confirm, right, okay. So next, okay, I'm going to make, uh, you know, to coincide this one and this one, okay. So, uh, you know, click coincide, coincident, okay, and this surface with this surface. Right, okay, so click OK over here, and the last one will be okay, will be this surface, sorry, this one and this one, okay, right, okay, so now we have done, okay, so click OK, and there you go, okay, so uh, right, let's click OK over here now, okay, so uh, now insert the last part, okay, which is part three, okay, so uh, let's insert the part three, okay, the cylinder. Here, open right okay so uh, I'm going to slide this cylinder through this hole okay so in order to do that okay so first we need to ensure that this circle and this hole okay is you know concentric okay concentric okay so which is uh, you know uh, used for circular entity okay so um, okay just click on this main okay and okay perpendicular we have done tangent sorry perpendicular and tangent okay I'm not going to show that so we have concentric okay so concentric is used for circular entities okay where you want those circular entities to share the same center line okay so this cylinder and also this hole to share the same center line okay so uh just click on this concentric okay and click on the circular surface or entities okay so i'm going to select this one and this surface okay now you can see that you know there are already uh, you know share the same center line. Okay, you can you know if I click on this one, okay, okay. So if I click on this one, okay, uh, you can move this part through the hole. Okay, right. Okay, just like that. Okay. Okay. You can only uh, what we call uh, move in this direction because you know we have already concentric. Okay, this circular part and this hole, okay, which means they're, you know, share the same center line, okay, right. So, uh, I'm going to put this, you know, this, uh, this cylinder, okay, at the center, okay, so if I move, uh, you know, view from the front, okay, okay, so just like that, okay, at the center, okay. So, now we know that uh, this cylinder is 120 millimeter long, okay, meanwhile, the base is only 100 millimeters. Okay, so logically, in order to make this cylinder be at the center of this part, we need to add a distance of 10 millimeter between this surface and this surface. Okay, so we have, you know, okay, uh, we have 120 over here, 
and 100 okay so which means this one is 10 millimeter and this one is 10 millimeter okay so uh, you cannot use coincident okay because if you use coincident okay between this surface and this surface then it will coincide with each other okay so to add distance between uh, this surface and this surface okay, right, okay so i'm going to move this one okay, a little bit over here so that you can see the animation uh, when we you know use the distance next okay so sorry okay right okay. so in order to add distance okay between this surface and this surface okay we can use the distance mate okay so all you have to do is just click on this mate and you will see that this is the distance mate okay so click on this distance mate input you know the direction i mean the, the dimension the distance that you want okay for example 10 okay and click this surface and this one okay right so now you will have your cylinder which is at the center of this block okay so let me view from the front view okay so you will see that this cylinder is actually uh, in the middle at the center of this block okay why because i already input this uh, 10 millimeters okay so which means this one also 10 millimeters okay right so if you input zero okay you will see that this part is moving okay and it is basically coincide okay so we can always play around with this value okay, increase right okay so i'm going to input 10 over there okay and there you go okay, okay. there you go okay so now you have already assemble this part okay uh, now lastly i'm going to show you how to use the angle mate okay so i'm going to insert a component okay which is part one get okay, the base right okay and i'm going to put it over here at the top over here okay right okay so okay right you can see that you know there are intersecting with each other okay so just move it okay there you go right Okay, so right. Okay, now, okay, in order to show uh, what we call the uh, the angle mate, okay, so I'm going to coincident uh, this line and this line, okay, between this line and this line, and I'm going to coincide this surface and this surface, okay. So first, let me coincide uh, this line and this line, right. So click on mate, okay, coincide this line over here with this line. Okay, perfect. Okay, and then I'm going to go inside this surface and this one. Okay, click OK. Right. Now you will see. Okay, uh, I can move uh, this part like this. Okay, why? Okay, everybody knows. Okay, because I go inside that line over here, this line. Okay, this line, and that particular line. Okay. And also the surface and the surface so that I can move this you know something like uh, leads over here okay so if you go inside this surface and this surface and this surface and this surface then you won't be able to rotate like this okay now I'm going to use the mid angle to input an angle between this surface and this one okay so all you have to do is just click on mid and select angle okay so i'm going to input 30 degree okay and select the surface okay so this one and this one okay so you will see okay from the right view okay so this is an angle of 30 okay so you can always change uh, this angle okay by increasing the value okay 32 okay or maybe i input 45 okay or 90 okay which is perpendicular okay uh, 80 okay, maybe 120 for example okay right so you know that line is always coincide with each other okay so i'm going to stick with the t angle okay so click ok and there you go okay right so uh, i think that will be the basic of assembly in solidwork okay in this video we have already learned how to make an assembly using coincident parallel and then a concentric uh, distance and angle okay so for perpendicular and tangent okay we really don't use them uh, frequently in assembly so uh, you can try to explore it on your own okay so uh, please save this file as we are going to use this assembly file in the next video for animation and explore the view okay so thank you very much and see you in the next video